And the title today, or the one that, that I put together, it's, uh, it's titled, uh, <clears throat> let me get this out of the way. So it's, it has to do with habits that, that we can create. So it's called 12 Habits of a Successful Real Estate Agent. So it's gonna be really, really interesting. If you can take notes on this, it will be great uh, because we all wanna create um, good habits, especially when it comes to our business. Good morning, Samantha. Hi, Ingrid. Morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you? Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day to you. Uh, yes. It's not happy. Remember a bottle, but yeah. But hey, uh, for those happy, that sacrifice, be happy to be stay to be safe. Yeah. yeah. Are you in your office or in North Miami? I am in, in Doral, in my office. Ah, okay. I confused with the, with the background. This is the photo or no? No, this is the office. No, oh. no that's, this is the office, yeah. Ah, it's very nice. I miss it. I miss it. <laughs> no, I know. Well, we're open, so if you want to swim by anytime, feel free. Really? Thank you. No. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe I, meet, I need to go tomorrow to Doral. So, uh, at what time that you stay in the office? I'm here uh, from nine. Well, I have Kelly here, so um, I'm in and out, but it's nine to five. Okay, I call, I, I call you when, when we are around the, the area. I'll be here tomorrow morning until three. Okay, okay, it's good. It's good this, this hour, All right. Yeah, yeah, and if you if you come in the morning before Steve's, presentation, I always put it in the big screen. So anybody, any agents that's here, they, they also- Oh, great. Uh, see it. Yeah, yeah. Steve, tomorrow is with you at, at 11 or at, at 1 p.m.? Uh, yes, at 11 o'clock. And uh, I, I still have to post the one for tomorrow, but it's gonna be the Foundation 101 uh, okay. tomorrow. Awesome. Okay. Did you know? Did you know if um, in time you could um, set up the font in the in the smart campaign in the smart campaign that that already created? Uh, you can set up text. Yeah, you can do two hundred texts a day with the plan that we have. If you if you want more than that, or if you want to record your uh, your calls through the system. Uh, that's an additional charge. It's not much. It's I think um, twenty dollars, fifteen, twenty dollars a month for the call package. There's a call package that's uh, an add-on. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. But but you can do the texting. The texting works really well. I do it all the time. Mm, yeah. All right. Good to know. Thank you. Awesome. All right, guys, let's go ahead and, and start. And, and thank you so much for taking the time today to, to joining us. I, I know that is Memorial Day. Um, a lot of your, your family members are home and you want to relax. But uh, we always want to take the time to help you succeed in your business and dedicate time for you. As you know, you guys are very special to us. And, and we want to make sure that, that you guys get the information um, and you don't miss anything. And today I wanted to talk to you about 12 habits of a successful real estate agent. And as you know, we are all creatures of habits, right? We do have a routine from the moment we wake up in the morning to the moment we go to bed. And those habits define who we are. Some habits are good, some habits are bad, but for the sake of this training, we wanna focus on the good habits, the ones that are gonna help you succeed in life, the ones that are help you and, and define you as a person, as a human being. So 12, of habits of a successful real estate agent. If you really like what you do, you'll never stop looking for new ways to improve. Now, you can't just go through motions and do things the same way if you wanted to be the best you can be. Growing up, I was always told, like, if you want to do something in life, make sure you're the best at it. And that's what I want you to do. If you pick real estate as your main business, make sure you're the best 
at your craft, work on your craft, and develop the, the success, develop the habits that will take you to succeed in business. Once you start to implement these habits that we're gonna cover and the tips into your own business, you will start to see some positive changes. I promise you. So let's go ahead and, and, and dive in. Number one, invest in yourself and your business. I'll say it again, invest in yourself and your business. And again, if you can take notes of this, it will, it will be great. Uh, so you can implement some of these habits into your own uh, lifestyle. Now, invest in yourself and your business, number one. This means uh, time and money. How much extra time do you not take advantage of when you're driving, working out, doing mindless tasks like dishes or laundry around the house? Instead, you could be reaching out or, or re, uh, researching, uh, rather, or listening to audio podcasts, learning and developing new skills and knowledge each single day will really go a long way. Me personally, from the moment I wake up, one of the things I do, I put a podcast on. Uh, there's one that I really like, it's called The Real Estate Guys. I like to listen to, to them or I put something that will motivate me or I'm always listening to something related to my to business or anything related to self-development. Now, read a book related uh, to business, uh, a book that can expand your horizons in ways that you're still relevant to your career. Try something like this book that I have here. This one is called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Books like this, they're really good to you. And, and business books and, and books about customer relations will do more for you than if you simply read books about real estate, since they will translate to other parts of your life as well. Learning more about your industry will help you become an expert in your field. The thing we keep stressing about. If we will then naturally separate you from competing agents in your area and niche, that's what the books will do for you. Other professionals may not be as knowledgeable or up to date about the latest industry trends, rules, and standards. So that's why we have this trainings put together. That's why I encourage you to pick up a book that, that will help you personally to grow and grow your, your, you and yourself in business. Remember, we're not in business to compete with others. We're in this business to dominate a market. Be the one, build your brand. Number two, know your neighborhoods in and out. I'll say it again, number two, know your neighborhoods in and out. If you get asked a question about a, a street, you need to answer with what's on the market, what's so recently, and the overall status of the neighborhood and its market. If someone suggests a certain neighborhood in the area, be prepared to automatically come up with suggestions to the top of your head. Now, you know they can go to the computer, they're gonna Google it, go to Silo, go to different sites, but you, as a person, you as the realtor need to know the area. And this is a big part of owning your specific market, of, of uh, dominating your market. If, if This is the biggest, I would say. Anyone can look up houses in the area, but you need to know the market inside and out. Number three, practice listing presentations and calls. Number three, practice listing presentations and calls. Role play your listing presentation with someone. And this is a biggie, I would say. Me personally, I like to role play my presentations right before I go and do one. Sometimes I do it by myself, I practice, or, or I try to record it and listen to it. But I like to do something that, that I, it will help me to see how I sound. So make sure that when I send out my presentation or I talk to the, uh, on the other side with the buyer or the seller, my presentation is good. And I'm, I'm pointing out what the, the main ideas of what I'm trying to put out to my, to my client. So role play your listening presentations with someone. Record your appointments and calls and have someone listen to them and critique them. And this is a very important. If you can get a spouse, uh, a business partner, have someone accountable that will help you, try doing this. Number four, have a plan on listing presentations. Now, most realtors, you know they use ACMA as a listing presentation and they compete on price to get that listing. But it's not unusual for an agent to name a higher price than they feel the home will sell for just to get the listing. Now, basing your listing on a CMA is a big problem for that specific reason. 
What works best is to evaluate the seller's motivation before going on a listing appointment and then using a proven listing presentation to get that listing. I'll say that again. What works better is to evaluate the seller's motivation before going on a listing presentation and then using a proven listing presentation to get that listing. Now, you can present a problem such as a shaky market and then solve that problem, showing how you sell homes in a rough housing market. Make an offer and ask for the listing. Ask for the listing. And let me pause there. Now, this may seem obvious, but agents, sometimes they stumble around this question or wait for the seller to make a statement first. Now, you shouldn't wait for the prospect to decide if they want to list the house with you uh, or before you they decide to close with you. Now remember, close the listing with a simple question. And, and, and you should all know this as salespeople. The statement goes, or you might remember this, the ABC of sales, always be closing. Well, when you go to a listing presentation, you wanna, aside from trying to sell yourself and, and, and help them see why you'd be the right person to list the house, you have to know how to close that person already. And, and you have to do it fast so close the listing with a simple question i'll give you a few questions that you can use a question like when can i start promoting your home to my buyers list simple right how about this one when can i tell my buyers and the other agents in my office about your home can i take a picture of your home today also never give up when the prospect says i have to think about it now you know this is an excuse if you have already answered most of your prospect questions and they just seem to be stalling, then get them to commit. Find out what their main objection is or concern is by saying something like, is there anything else holding you back from making this important decision? Then address it and any other concern they might have, they might have head on. Do your best to overcome all their objections for waiting and, and thinking more about the decision. If they come up with the lame excuse to start like, I never make big decisions like this until I have slept on it. Don't tell them that you respect that and say something like, I respect that. Don't you feel that I can sell your home? When they answer yes, then you go for the close again and say something like, then put me to work today and let me start marketing your home immediately. It sounds simple, but you, this stuff you need to rehearse, you need to role play, and you need to record yourself and try it out with another, a partner, a spouse, somebody that can critique how you're doing and, and when you're doing. Number five, explain everything you're doing. I'll say it again, number five, explain everything you're doing. Now, this goes hand in hand with the last step about listing presentations, but it follows through for every interaction. People want to know the reasoning behind each thing that you do, and they have the right to. This one is the big, the, the things that make the client the most satisfied about you. So keep them informed for every single step, no matter how small they are. Like good students doing math homework, successful agents show their work. So really go into detail to explain the potential roadblocks and all those scenarios that, that could occur or, or could happen. Let your client know how you're negotiating and why you're taking specific actions. Keep in regular communication and let them know when you adjust your strategy as well. So one thing that I like to do on this step is um, I do have, you don't have to use it like this. For me, uh, it, it works. And then I do have this book, for example. If I'm dealing with a seller, I have this book called Sold, How to Sell Homes Others Couldn't Sell. Now, when I'm, when I'm going to my presentation or I'm dealing with a client, I want them to know everything that I'm going to be doing through the transaction. Now, in this book, I have all everything pretty much that I go in every single transaction. Now, there might be stuff happening because every transaction is different, but this gives them step by step on what I'm doing, why am I doing it, and when I'm doing it. So it, it talks about how to stage your home, why you should stage your home, uh, why you should take certain steps when you're selling your home. Uh, the type of marketing that I do. So everything is lined out here. So sometimes I refer back to it. Now, what am I trying to do when I do stuff like this? I'm trying to create a brand. They're going to remember me for the agent that helped them, but not, also, not only that, 
the one that gave him a book. So you don't have to use this, but that's, that's a way that I do it to build a, a closer relationship with my client and build authority in my market. So let's go to number six. Have a large, have a large sphere of influence. Keep track of it and use it. So number six, have a large sphere of influence. Keep track of it and use it. As you know, good relationships and keeping a lasting relationship with past clients is a huge part of getting referrals, testimonials, and other massively important parts uh, that build and expand your sphere of influence. But there's a fine line in keeping in touch with your past clients and becoming that annoying pest who's always calling and emailing. Reaching out to them is a necessary step. Any online or, or print type of marketing that you do would not appeal or apply to them the majority of the time specifically. But if you can call them or email them, ask them real estate questions. See if there's anything they wish that they had known. See what their favorite parts of, the, of their new home are. The, the point of these questions is to drive the conversation and learn anything you can do differently. You can ask for a referral, preferably at the end of the call, but it can be the main, it cannot be the main basis of the phone call. You have to think of it as a relationship building phone call. And that's what we've been talking to you guys for the past few months. Uh, every time we do any of the trainings, building relationships. We're in the building relationship business. So calling them up and asking them for a referral as the main objective, it's just going to shut them off to you. All clients are just part of this, this pie. And you should know the best contractors, appraisers, lenders, uh, and insurance providers in the business. Again, this is part of your power team. But your job is to create a hub of a group of professionals that can advise and assist with any real estate or home related. And this is how you go past the closing table. When you close the table, you want your clients to go back to you. Hey, I need this. I'm, I, I'm running through this situation at home. What can I do? Who can I call? They're going to come to you because they, they know that you have built a business with everybody at the whole team around you that's going to advise and help not only you, but your clients as well. So number seven, have a morning routine. A lot of you have this. Number seven, have a morning routine. Every good agent has a successful morning routine when they get into work. The structure should spill into the rest of your day and you need to plan your time the best way you can. So this one is really simple. Number eight, communicate as quickly as possible. And this is very important. Communicate as quickly as possible. Clients hate when they don't get a call back in a decent time frame. It's certainly understandable. We all feel that way, but find out the best ways that they want you to get in touch with them and provide a reasonable timeline so they can, they know when they can anticipate and expect a response from you. Anything over 24 hours is unacceptable. The most successful agents return calls and emails promptly. They get a lead and follow up immediately, answering any and all questions a client or potential clients may have. They make their clients feel important. Maintaining constant contact throughout the life of the transaction and after. Now we have tools that you can put this into action. We have Chime, we have a phone, we have text, we have emails. So use these tools to make sure you reach out to your client promptly. Number nine, fully utilize social media. Fully utilize social media, number nine. A part of your online presence, and a huge part of it, is conveying your life throughout different social media platforms. Now, you need to let your clients and prospects see what your personal life is like and what you're all about, but don't hesitate to share some more personal details in your business page. And, and Steve can cover more about, about this part, and he has, and you can join us on, on some of those trainings, but how you respond to any inquiries, questions, and anything online is how you're going to constantly represent the brand you're trying to build up. In real estate, it's necessary uh, or it's nearly Im it's impossible to maintain a separate personal and professional life. It goes hand in hand. 
but your social media accounts are a giant part of your online patrol uh, image. Use that to help your brand thrive. A lot of us start posting, start using our online presence, but the minute we get clients sending us information, or we have sometimes we have other people, other companies reaching out to us, we tend to ignore those texts. And, I, and I'm at fault of that sometimes, but you, you cannot do that. You can't afford to do that. So make sure you engage with all your, all your followers. Make sure you engage with people that are reaching out to you and you can reach out to them through the same type of platform. So this is a big, number 10, know what your customers want. Number 10, know what your customers want. Know what your customers want most and what your company does best. Focus on where those two meet. And this is very, very interesting. Know what your customers want most and what your company does best. Focus on where they to meet. Now, think of it a bit like a, a gift shopping for a friend or, or an acquaintance. The better you know the person, the easier it is to buy them something meaningful. Their physical characteristics are only part of the equation. What are their concerns and fears? Money, stability, mobility, status, image. Knowing that what interests them is key. People do business with people. And you can't relate a client or lead until you know the values or ideas that they have or what's important to them. So this, keep in mind uh, what concerns they have, what fears, try to relate to the, and that comes hand in hand with building a, that type of relationship and how fast you can build a relationship with them. Number 11, have a decent insight about mortgages and the market. Chances are your clients will ask a few landing questions. The more information you provide, the better it is. You don't have to know every single detail about each type of mortgage loan, but you should be able to answer basic questions about them. Now, if you join, if you have joined us in the past in Real Estate Friday, I have invited people, uh, lenders, that have answered a lot of your questions. Feel free to reach out to them. Feel free to ask them any questions you might have, or think of the, the questions you get the most and try to get the answers directly from them so you can relate it to your customers. Number 12 and final, get leads any way you can. Get leads any way you can, number 12. Now this last one might seem like the most obvious one, but we're really saying not to refuse or dismiss any ways of prospecting. Be prepared to do things you don't nearly like or you aren't that comfortable with, like cold calling or cold leads drive some agents nuts. And you probably agree with me in here. So before there's sometimes, and you know, this is very necessary. It's like going to the gym. You go to the gym, you work out, you do your thing, but you know you have to do cardio. Cardio is necessary, although we all hate it. So consider each time you hear no, that it's another step closer to getting a yes when you're doing cold call. Is it true that, that this is very true when it comes to, if you look at statistics, when you hear a no, you're closer to getting a yes. So just keep going and never take it personally because that's when people get down the most in this process. As any other type of sales, real estate is a numbers game. And the more people you talk to, the more good ideas or more good leads you get and the more sales you make. And again, you wanna make sure you contact as many people as possible. And that goes from your sphere and, and new leads, past leads, old clients. You do have to create that spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. You do have to implement all these people in your, in your shine, in your system to make sure you have ways of communicating with them. So that's, those were the 12 uh, habits that I wanted to share with everyone today. I hope you find it very helpful. I hope you were able to take some notes and most important that you can apply it to your lives and you know, the way you do your business. So I wanna encourage everyone to, to put that into action. And if you have any questions or you have other ideas that you want that we should implement in the way we do business, please feel free to share that with us. Um, any questions or you want me to go over anything, please feel free to put it in the chat or uh, unmute yourself and let me know. Jackie. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, when one person coming from the Google, you don't know that person. And if that person want to see, okay, I have one place. I don't know that person and she want to see one uh, listing, but I, how I want to take some information. I say, okay, I'm going to send you, uh, I need some information for my office. Yeah. But I don't know if you have some 
some paper when we can take some information about the that is real, that is not dangerous person, yeah, for security. I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. Well, it comes, it always comes with prospecting. So when you're prospecting, you're always asking questions to find out if the person qualifies or not. Just when you get a brand new uh, a buyer, let's say you, you got you have a buyer lead. So you don't want to waste time with a buyer, right? So you don't want to start showing houses and do that stuff before you get that buyer qualified, right? Mm -hmm. You get them pre-approved by a lender. So how do you get them qualified? Well, you have to get them qualified. You have to ask questions that will let you know how serious and if this person will qualify in four more years. The second uh, gonna, I have to ask her to send me that papers or what? It all it all depends on your strategy uh, when you're prospecting and when you're asking your questions to get your client pre-qualified. Me personally, the way I pre-qualify people, I start asking, I start, I get into a conversation, a friendly conversation. And part of that friendly conversation, I start asking if they have a job, if they have savings, how long they've been looking to buy a home, and how soon they need to buy a home. And then that, that conversation, it will lead to answering all the questions that I need to know or the basic information that I need from that person to be able to see if it's going to be worth the time to invest right now or if I'm going to put it in my pipeline. Now, okay. I don't know if that patient, that person is, is, uh, is dangerous or not, but it all depends on what type of relationship I build on, until I get them into my safe ground and my area. For me, if I don't know them, I try not to meet them at, at the property unless I meet them first and get them qualified. The way I get them qualified is by inviting them over to, to the office. I do have an interview with them, and then I put them in touch with the lender. Now, if it works out, great. If it, if it doesn't, I try to put it in my pipeline. Okay. What was number six exactly? It was build a team or what was the exact um, rule or? For number, like six, for number six, it, it has to do with have a large sphere of influence and keeping track of it and use it. When it comes to um, having a sphere, obviously it's you do want to grow your, your sphere. Every time you have a relationship with a client, for example, uh, you just met. All right, but you're trying to build a relationship. Now that person eventually will be part of your sphere. It will be part of your past clients, people that you can you know, go back to and, and then see how you can help them and, and build a relationship from there or a repeat business. And, uh, and as part of um, uh, having a, a team in place, this goes back to, you know, besides having all clients, you also want to have a power team. So you have contractors, you have appraisers, you have lenders, you have insurance provider, uh, providers in your business. These are sorts of, of people that you need to have is very essential in your business and you want them to keep in touch with them so they can potentially send you referrals as well. But let's say you close a house, you have a relationship with your buyer, et cetera, after the closing, and then they have any issue, a water leak from the roof, uh, landscaping, pool cleaning guy, you know, they're going to come to you and see if you can, you know, suggest anybody. Why? Because they trust you first. Hey, Judy, do you have anybody I can use for the pool? Yeah, absolutely. This is the best guy I have. Why? Because you already built a relationship with that vendor. And that's, that's how, how you build this, this type of business. And, and then you convert into a referral machine. And I wanted to let everyone know, too, that uh, I wrote uh, all of the um, uh, steps, the 12 steps in the chat. And if any of you want a list of that, email me or Daylon. And uh, we'll, we'll drop, right, Daylon? We'll, we'll, we'll drop yeah. them an email yeah. with, with the 12 steps uh, detailed out for you. Yeah, if you want, what I'll do is I'll put it, I'll put it together uh, in a PDF. I'll send it over to you guys or I'll send it over to Steve and then we can share it with everybody. That way you have, you can always go back to it and, 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 re and reference the list. And I know you're in the car, Judy, but feel free to email me and, and I'll drop that to you as well. Yeah. Good Any question. Questions? Thank you, Steve. Thank you. All right. So thank you guys again for joining us today. Uh, stay tuned. Tomorrow, uh, we're having a, a training with Steve. Steve, you want to give us an intro on that? Yeah, tomorrow we're going to be rebooting the Foundation 101 uh, class that we did. That We haven't done that in a few months, uh, actually, three, four months. And those of you that have worked with me directly know that uh, I always start you guys out with the Foundation 101 cheat sheet. So we're going to be detailing that. I'm going to give you the cheat sheet in the class. And that is the... Uh, I think 50 or so, 50 some uh, steps that you'd need to do that I tell everybody to get started. Uh, so this is the, 
I don't have anything and where do I get started Steve class uh, starting from mm -hmm. ground zero so uh, and at the end like I said I give you a cheat sheet that's like a checklist for everything um, to go through it but we're gonna go through all the pieces and detail what you should be doing to get started so it's really valuable you guys should all have this and even if you have already gone through this you're gonna want a refresher to go through and and um, catch the things that you probably missed the first time that's tomorrow at 11. Yeah, so make sure you use this time. Uh, we're going back to basics. Uh, that's pretty much what Steve is going to do. So if you can, you can go ahead and, and take advantage of that and, and invite any other agents and, and friends that you think might take advantage of this. Go ahead and invite them over. Uh, let them know the website. Uh, Steve, what's the website? Yeah, the website is www.brokernation.events. Um, this cheat sheet, I don't make available to the public. I haven't put it out there to just anybody. I um, make it available to people on request, uh, but it is pretty good stuff. It's valuable. We took uh, a lot of time to put that together and it's not uh, just public information that we share out there with just anybody. So make sure you um, tell your friends and uh, other realtors in your database <laughs> and invite them along because it's uh, stuff that they really won't find anywhere else www.brokernation.events. I'm about to put the uh, event up there actually after this. It'll be up there in the next hour that you can register for it. Awesome. And stay tuned for the rest of the week. Uh, we always have some stuff coming up and trainings. We have Thursday and Friday. We're preparing everything else for the rest of the week. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, have a safe Memorial Day and um, stay safe and stay healthy. And remember, reach out to your sphere and reach out to everyone. And today's a good day to just make phone calls and touch, uh, you know, keep in touch with people. So thank you again, guys, for, for engaging with us the, this morning. And I hope you have a, a safe Monday. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you.